Hey you guys. So I already made a video today um, because I, I realized that my brain was still not uh, functioning at its best. And so I just decided I would play some Blitz in my soft play area. Um, but it was awful. It was just, it was awful. I played five games in an arena and I think I won two, lost three, but they were all terrible. And I think the highest rated player lost each game. Like, I, literally, I lost someone to rate to someone rated something like 938. Absolute garbage. So I'm not going to upload it. And instead, we're going to look at these. Now, I'm sure you're wondering what this is. Well, this is a concept that's been brewing in my mind for a few weeks. And it's it's kind of it's meant to be a way of understanding our performance at chess and in particular how to protect your rating if protecting your rating is important to you and it's not important to everybody okay um, some people get a, a lot more nervous and anxious about losing rating points than others do and I think that probably doesn't help yeah we should treat it as a game we should treat it as a a test of oneself and a test of one's performance and that is the key to this so let's say that this um the one on top the the pink dot is you and the orange dot is your opponent now what do these uh humps represent well they are bell curves also known as normal distribution and um, normal distribution is found in lots and lots and lots of places in nature um, where there is a tendency towards the average. Okay. And um, so, for example, people's shoe sizes, IQ, height, that kind of thing, all tends towards. So, the, you know, around the, the middle, you find more examples of a particular measurement or whatever. And towards the high extremes and low extremes, it peters out obviously now chess um, ratings also uh, tend to be like this the the average like the peak um, here which I think is the mode average which is different to median or, or mean and stuff like that is about these days about 850 some or 900 something like that it used to be 1050 when I first joined chess.com back when all this was just fields um, yeah, it used to be a bit high, but we've had a big influx of, of beginners thanks to um, lockdown and all that, and of, obviously Ms. Harmon and the, the Queen's Gambit. So, um, this is you, right? And this bell curve represents your performance. Now, most of the time, you'll be in the middle of your performance range. So, let's say you are rated 1000 now, okay? So, and this is you performing at 1,000, all right? Now, sometimes you play out of your skin. Sometimes the planets are aligned. You know, you, you, you've had a really good sleep. You've had a really good eat. You know, you're not hungry. You've got plenty of energy. You feel positive. Your mind's in the right state. You can concentrate. There's no distraction, all that kind of stuff. And you play above your current rating. Now, what is your current rating? Your current rating is, how, is not how good you are at chess at all, right? Your current rating is the sum total of all your performance over time, right? So what am I in, in rapid right now? I'm something like 1420, something like that, right? And that is, and, and a week ago or so, I was 1590, right? So a week or so ago, my entire performance summed up to, added up to 1590. And then I've had a terrible week and I've gone on a massive bender and a big slide and gone down to 1420 or 1440 or something like that. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean that I've suddenly got worse at chess in a week? No, I haven't got worse at chess. What's happened is my performance has gone down. And that's different. And I'm not too worried because I know that I will bounce back. Now, is 1590 my maximum um, level that I can play at? Absolutely not. Because here, when my current rating was 1590, so the middle of the, the bell curve, right, is 1590, 
it meant that I would have a chance of beating somebody rated 1600 or 1700 or even 1800 or 1900 or 2000, right? Now the chance of me beating them goes down to a degree um, as, as their rating goes up. So let's for, say for example, so this is you rated 1000, yeah? So we're gonna move you over here and let's see your opponent is rated 1200, okay? Now that would be something like, like this. And chess.com says, okay, your current rating is whatever, 1,000. Your opponent's current rating, so the sum total of their performance to date, is 1,200. So that's when you get a situation where it says it gives you a game and it says win plus 12, right? Lose minus 4. Draw plus 4. So the draw amount is always the win and the lose added together and then halved. Okay, so plus 12, minus 4 gives you plus eight, half of, half of that is plus four, right? So you get plus four for a draw. Now, if you are about the same rating as your opponent, let's say you are slightly slightly stronger than them, okay? Then it might give you a nine seven. So uh, win seven, lose minus nine, draw minus one, because it's half the difference. Okay, simple as that. Now, here's the point. What is the point, dude? Here's the point. Yeah, Walter, what's your point? Um, great scene from a great movie, by the way. Okay, now, here's how I want you to visualize this, okay? It, now, this applies to those of you who care about your rating, right? And I appreciate that's not everybody, so you can switch off now if you're not bothered about improving your rating. But guess what? This is me protecting my rapid rating right now. And you're like, what are you doing? How, how are you somehow improving your rapid rating? Well, I tell you, what, what I'm doing is I'm not playing rapid right now, okay? Because I went on chess.com and I played loads and loads and loads of games, uh, like, you know, 50, 90 games in a day. And most of them, I was awful or below par. And the reason was because I was operating in this area of the bell curve. So let's put a... Let's put a, like a ring, you know. I was operating in this area, okay? Like this, yeah, I was operating around here. And when you are basically below par, below your average, then you will lose more than you win, okay? Now, so here's the thing. If you want to improve your rating, okay, the easiest thing to do is to spot when you are below par right and don't play and when you are feeling fresh and alive and full of energy and positive and all these kinds of things and you are above there right play simple as that yeah because you 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 rarely play at exactly your your rating all right let's uh, let's pull up my i'll pull up my, my profile right with recent games okay um so i played a bunch of blitz games today because i'm not playing rapid right Bunch, bunch of uh, Blitz games, but let's go, um, we'll go back a bit longer, and it doesn't let you filter these here. Okay, so here's some rapid games, right? My most recent rapid games, the ones that have been analyzed, 74 from me, 47 from me, so that's below what I'm capable of, right? 62, 74, so 74 seems to be around my kind of, you know, when I'm doing all right. Um, 66, 74 again, 83, and that's me playing well, you know, 85, right? And my opponent played 80 and I lost, okay? Uh, 73, 89, you know, 64, 52. So what do these ratings mean? Well, they just mean, your, your, your accuracy score just means how much of the time are you finding the best move or nearest damn it, or a move that's as near as damn it good as, good as the best move, right? So when I'm playing well, I'm finding the best move, you know, three out of four times or four out of five times. 75 to 80% accuracy, that's good for me, right? Below that is not good. So you, this is my point, you know? You're very rarely exactly here, you know? And plus, Let's say you're playing a, um, 
you're playing somebody who's much stronger than you, right? As we have said this lots of times you know, before, if you beat them, you could win 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 points, okay? Which is great. If they lose, they lose that many points to you as well. But the thing is that if you're playing really well, let's say you're playing here, like in your top 5% of your performance, they are very likely, and I find this all the time, you know, I play lower rated players, you know, and when I play lower rated players, I tend not to be as accurate because I'm expecting them to make more mistakes. I'm expecting them to play weaker moves. Yeah, but a lower rated player might see that I'm higher rated and might really turn on the gas. So in fact, in, in terms of your actual performance, you know, you could be, you could be equals on that day, right? If, you've, if you're picking a higher rated opponent who's just thinking, oh, I'll just pick up a, a you know, custom open challenge and beat somebody and just grab a point or two, right? That's when you go, okay, I'm gonna grit my teeth. I'm gonna stick at this. I'm gonna try and beat this bugger, yeah? So, um, so that's basically the point. You, you almost never, you don't play at your exact rating range. You can play above it, you can play below it, you can play around it. You can sometimes play out of your skin and sometimes you can be a complete Muppet, okay? As I have been. And, but the important thing is, is, is that discipline, right? Because if you know that you are below par, yeah? not playing chess is the right thing, or not playing rated chess is the right thing to do. So this is what I've been saying. Find yourself a soft play area. Go on Lee Chess, Chess 24, Chess Kid, right? Put out an unrated challenge, pick up an unrated challenge, do some puzzles, right? Do some study, do anything, right? But do not play, if, if you have this feeling that, oh no, I've dropped, 50 points in the last few days, right? I'm, I'm better than this, right? No, you're not, right? How good you are is where you are performing. So I've been performing like, like round here, right? Because I've been tired or not sleeping properly or whatever, yeah? So if I'm performing around there, that is my performance, right? I don't, the universe doesn't owe me ELO. The universe doesn't owe you ELO, right? If you're performing down here, you are performing down there. It's like when people say, you know, your body shape is the exact body shape. It's the exact correct body shape, right? The amount of fat that you're carrying on your body is the exactly appropriate amount, depending on what you've stuffed in your mouth and how much exercise you've done, etc., etc. right? Right, despite the fact that we are totally miseducated about what makes us fat and what doesn't, by the way. Um, but, you know, it's the sum total of everything that you've put in your mouth compared to all the positive things that you've done, right? The amount of money in your bank account, right? Unless you've literally been the victim of fraud, right? Is the exact right money, depending on, on what you've earned and what you've spent, okay? Your current rating is the exact, most accurate um, sum total of your performance to date, right? But it isn't how good you are. How good you are goes up and down depending on loads and loads and loads of factors. So developing the skill to say, I suck today, or do you know what, today I'm feeling pretty good. Or here's another thing, you know when I play at five o'clock in the morning, I'm pretty sharp, you know? I feel like I've got all the time in the world, I can really devote myself to the game, give it my full attention, and if I play later on in the day, or you know, some people are at work and just pull their phone out and have a game on a little screen and stuff like that, I tend to lose more. Um, so it's really interesting that. Uh, anyway, so I thought we would sit down and have this little chat, and like I say, this is me looking after my rating, because I know that I haven't been playing all that well. well. In fact, this morning I was playing really, really badly. This afternoon, like I said, I've just played you know half a dozen blitz games, doing a lot better. So there you go. Um, that's it. But yeah, really think about these two bell curves. Yeah, and always try and play in the top. Do you know if you always play in the top half of your performance, your rating will just keep climbing. Now, if you can spot, this is where you know. Um, I can tell when I'm feeling anxious or desperate or I feel like 
God, I'm better than this. No, you're not. You are exactly, your standard is exactly what it is in this moment, you know, that includes your emotional state and your energy, everything else, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, you, you can perform, if, you, if you're down here and you suck, right? You can perform better. You can perform up here, but it doesn't mean that nobody owes you that. It's down to you. To, to either to get there, so maybe what you need to do is take a break, go for a walk in the fresh air, do some exercise, something like that, right? Have a glass of water, go out and have a sleep, Wh whatever you need to do, right? But each of us needs to develop the ability to know when we're in form or not. The only difference is if you're a professional and you've got a tournament coming up, then you, you need to be on form at that tournament, right? So if you are a professional, you've got a tournament coming up, that's when you pay a lot of attention to your sleep to diet, exercise, artificial light, you know, you, but you, you probably have coaches for, for things like that as well. So yes, yeah, really, this, this whole area of the psychology of chess performance, I think is really, really fascinating. So thank you for um, listening to me bang on about that, but I'm, I'm definitely starting to think more in terms of bell curves. And you know what, sometimes, sometimes you'll come across somebody who you think, right, I ought to beat this guy, but never think I'm owed, I'm owed this victory, right? Sometimes you might play somebody who's lower rated than you and they're just playing really well, okay? And if you play badly, you played badly, right? They didn't make you play badly. So, you know, just sometimes just be easy on yourself. You know, sometimes your opponent, your opponent might be rated around the same level as you, you know, but they just play that bit better you play that bit worse and they beat you then that's okay it happens right but the point is to take full 100 percent responsibility for sensing where you are right in terms of your own performance curve and if you're in that bottom half you may choose not to play for prizes you know not to play for money so that's all i have to say thank you for listening and i'll see you guys soon